Jupyter Notebook in 10 minutes. That is the name of the video you clicked on. Hey, my name is Colt. Let's uh, let's slow it down. That's kind of a lot of fast talking there. Jupyter Notebook is one of the most commonly used tools in the world of data and data science and data anything. And it also happens to be used in a lot of courses that teach those topics. And what a coincidence, I happen to have a course I just released that uses Jupyter Notebook. It's a course on data analysis and visualization using Python, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, and more. Oh gosh, I just love that advertising. <clears throat> um, yeah, there's a coupon in the description if you're interested. All right, here we go. Jupyter Notebook is a super popular tool that's used to generate and work with notebook documents. These notebook documents combine code, which is usually Python but doesn't have to be, with text elements and images and headings, equations, figures, different plots, the output of the code alongside the code itself, and it's all in this very visual interactive format directly in your browser. So here are some examples. This is a notebook, as it says. Uh, there's text up here, and then Python code. And I can run this Python code. Let's look at my cat hates me 99 times. Or let's do something even fancier. Let's make a, a little 3D plot. So it's gonna take a moment, but there we go. Would you look at this plot? It's all in this notebook document. We've got the code alongside the output generated by that code. Plus bullet points and text and videos and images and whatever else we want, fancy equations, audio, all of this can go into a notebook document. They're very popular in the world of data because we can view charts and plots, things that you don't need Jupyter Notebook to create, but we can create these sort of reports. Uh, we can analyze data with code and generate some end results that uh, we can then disseminate to people. So you can't really run Python in the browser natively, the way that it all works, just really quickly. You type some code in some cell in a notebook, you execute it, well, the browser sends it off to a notebook server, which is running in the background, and then it interfaces with whatever kernel. Uh, the default is Python 3, but as I said, you can have other languages. But Python 3 will then evaluate whatever code it received, send that output back, and then our browser displays it for us to look at. So we get that nice looking chart from that code. So that's the basic concept. Next up, installation. So this is not going to be an install video, but uh, I'll just quickly run through your options. You have a couple. First, you can just install it just as you would install any other Python package with pip and deal with uh, virtual environments. But another option is to use Anaconda. So Anaconda comes with a bunch of different packages and different tools. All you need to do is go to anaconda.com, anaconda individual edition, download, and open up the app when it finishes installing. And you'll see something like this, Anaconda Navigator. This is the app that I just installed. Uh, and one of these tools that we have in this navigator is Jupyter Notebook. I'll click launch, it starts a server up, it opens my browser, and I see the Jupyter Navigator, the dashboard, uh, where I have a, a representation of my file system. So all my messy folders and files, downloads, applications, pets, documents, uh, you can move around and create new folders and files. But what I'm gonna show you is how to make our first notebook. So we can go to new Python 3. That makes me a Python 3 notebook. Here it is. Uh, it's untitled. I can click here to give it a new title. My very first notebook. There we are. And what I'm looking at now is a cell, an empty code cell. We can tell it's code. It actually says code right there. Uh, and I can type some stuff in here like one plus eight. And I can run this cell by clicking the run button. That's the clunky way of doing it. Another option is to use the shortcuts. So if I do something, let's do 99 times 99, uh, I can do shift return, I can do control return or command return uh, on a Mac. And I'll see the output right below the input, the Python code. Now, uh, there are, there's a slight difference um, in those different shortcuts. If I do shift return, it's gonna make me a new empty cell afterwards if I'm at the bottom. Uh, so that can be useful if I know right after this, four plus one, I want another cell. I can use shift return and it makes that cell and moves me down to it. So I can click around to move to a different cell if I wanna tweak this and instead do one minus eight, I can run it. I just did uh, command return on my Mac. Uh, I can also use the arrow keys to move up and down. Now notice I've got this blue cursor here. Uh, showing me which cell I'm in. But if I start typing, like let's say in this cell right here at the bottom, um, I want to print out ha ha a hundred times, just really simple, stupid stuff. If I start typing, so I want quotes, H, hey, what, 
what's going on? Well, I wasn't actually entering anything into this cell. I'm not editing it. I'm in something called command mode. To actually start editing, I either need to click in and it will turn green and there's a border around it, or I just clicked out uh, if, to go back to this command mode, or I can hit enter slash return. Uh, and now I can type my code in here, ha ha times 100 or whatever I said, and then I'll run that. So that's something that trips people up all the time. Let's say I want to tweak this cell here. I want it to be a, a times uh, a multiplication. If I start typing, it's not going to work. I have to do enter to start editing that cell, and then I can run that cell. All right. So next, what can we do in this command mode? What is the point of having that distinction between actually editing something versus just selecting it? Well, there are many shortcuts we can use, uh, different commands that we can enter when we are not editing a cell. So first I can hit escape if I am editing a cell and I want to deselect it and go into this uh, command mode. I can move around with the arrow keys. So if I want to make new cells, I want three new cells above this one. What I can do is actually in command mode, I can type the letter A one, two, three different times. Uh, I can also go to insert, insert cell above and do that manually. I'm going to delete that cell though. And to do that, I can either go to, is it edit? Yeah, delete cells, not really what I do. Uh, or I can type the D key twice, one, two. And you probably saw that it went away. But these only work if I'm in command mode, because if I hit enter and I start editing and I type A, well, I'm just typing the letter A. So if I want to actually create four cells above this one, I would hit escape and then I could type A. And then to delete them, I can do D, D, double D, double D, double D. So I can insert a cell below using B. So A for above, B for below. These notebooks support a combination of code, which is what we've been doing so far with text. Uh, and text includes things like images and bullet points and uh, headings and all of that, we can actually write markdown directly in a notebook. But in order to do that, we need to make sure we have a markdown cell. So this is a code cell right now, but I can switch it over to markdown. And now if I start typing in here, we're not going to see much happen. If I run this cell, uh, it's now rendering the markdown output for me. So that's not very exciting there. But if I do a markdown heading, heading, which is done with a single hash symbol or octothorpe. Now I get that heading. If I do, uh, you know, another heading, heading two, I can do that. <laughs> I can have a bunch of different levels. Here's a level five, I think. I could also add in bullet points, hi, and goodbye, and a whole bunch of other markdown syntax. So again, this has to be a markdown cell. If this was a Python cell, and I try and run this now, I'm going to get an error. It doesn't know what to do with this. It's trying to run this as Python. So I can turn it to Markdown by actually typing or by clicking Markdown like that with my mouse, or uh, I can use the letter M if I'm in command mode. So I'm in command mode right now. I type M. Well, it's already a Markdown cell. But if I want this to be a Python cell, I don't type the letter C, which is confusing. I actually type Y. So Y makes this a code cell. M makes it markdown. Um, we can also restart the kernel or interrupt it. And this is important to know about if you <laughs> do something that's taking forever or uh, is generating some sort of infinite loop or some problem and you're not getting any uh, resolution over here on the client side. For example, if I have this lovely infinite loop here, uh, I'll run this and <laughs> you'll see it's just going to keep printing numbers over and over and over. There's also a little asterisk here indicating that uh, the code is still it's running and we haven't received uh, any result back from the kernel. So to interrupt this, to stop it, I can go kernel interrupt or I can just type II two times in succession, just like to delete a cell, we do DD one after another. So that interrupted it, that stopped it. Uh, and now I can make my tweak and let's say maybe I meant to do x minus equals one. And now if I rerun that cell with command enter or shift enter, we get the output I was anticipating. So I successfully stopped that infinite loop uh, using that interrupt. And then to actually stop this, this particular notebook, we can do close and halt here. So that stops the notebook. If I go to this running tab, 
you'll see now that it tells me I have no notebooks running. And then if I actually want to shut down Jupyter itself, there's a server running. Uh, what I can do is just close the server that was generated for me. That's one option in my terminal. Or I can go to quit. And that shuts down the entire Jupyter server. So if I try and view one of these notebooks now, it doesn't know what I'm talking about. That local host, uh, that server's just not up and running. I would need to relaunch the notebook application. Alrighty, so that's a quick crash course on how to use Jupyter Notebook. Uh, there's there's more shortcuts and different commands, different things in the menus that we could cover. But what I covered is the most important stuff uh, that will at least get you started. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about Jupyter Notebook or you want to learn more about data analysis and visualization with Panda, Seaborn, and Matplotlib, yep, you know it. I have a course I just released on it. Keep on in the description and... Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you're doing great. I I, I love you. <laughs> Never thought I would say that, but I love you. I do.